This isn't your mother's news magazine. Or is it? And welcome to another edition of Mondays in Midtown. I'm Mark Zinn. The Grand Bridge is on everyone's mind. When's the project going to start? What detours am I going to have to take? What about the Metrolink station? Well, earlier today, we caught up with our good friend Rich Bradley. He is the city's chief engineer and had a lot to say about this upcoming project. Can you give the, the viewers uh, an update in terms of the timeline for this project? Yes, we uh, bid the project uh, this past Tuesday, which was the 23rd of November, so we were on schedule with that. Uh, the bids came in very well. At this time, we have an apparent low bidder, which is Cosney Wagner Incorporated, which is a St. Louis company. Uh, currently, what we're doing is reviewing paperwork. Uh, the paperwork will also be sent to Missouri Highway Department and Federal Highway since it's a federally funded project. And once uh, MoDOT allows us to award the bid, uh, we will issue a notice to proceed to the contractor to begin. Now, that time frame typically takes anywhere from four to six weeks for uh, MoDOT to review all the documents and uh, give us the authority to award the bid. And then it'll take the city about four to six weeks to run that through the process. So once we get through, we're anticipating notice to proceed uh, right about March the 1st. So you should see construction work out there sometime in mid-March. And that's uh, you know, pushed back just a little bit. But you talk about Metro's plans. Metro's plans have changed just a little bit. They are planning to keep um, the Metro Grand Stop open but you, may, you won't be able to access it from the Grand Bridge. That's correct. My understanding is, is the Scott Avenue station, which currently is under Grand Avenue, will remain open for the majority of the project. Uh, there will be some closures uh, associated with the new elevator towers that are going to be built there, but for the most part, uh, it is my understanding the station will remain open. And when do you uh, think you'll open the bridge, the brand, new brand, uh, the brand new Grand Bridge? We believe that traffic will be restored on the bridge in about 12 months, so we're looking at about March, April of 2012. We think that the project will be 100% complete in May of 2012. All right, all right. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much for your time. Captivating stuff there. Thanks, Rich. Ann Wagner, you know her. She was on the premiere, the world premiere of Mondays in Midtown back in the day when she was on the power panel. She was also the former U.S. Ambassador to the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, former chairman of the Missouri Republican Party, and former co-chair of the RNC. Well, now she wants to become chairman of the Republican National Committee and upseat Michael Steele. She officially announced her bid today, and we have a portion of a video message she sent to RNC members. My lifetime of service to the Republican Party, a record of proven conservative leadership and results, has prepared me for this job. Today, I am asking for your trust and support. I've served our party at all levels as the Lafayette Township Committee Woman in St. Louis County, as Chairman of the Missouri Republican Party, and as Co-Chairman of the Republican National Committee. In Missouri, I have been at the very center of the effort to turn a battleground state into a reliably red state. When I chaired the Missouri Republican Party, we took control of both houses of our General Assembly for the first time in 50 years. We also elected a Republican governor and a Republican U.S. Senator and delivered Missouri's electoral college votes for George W. Bush in 2000 and 2004. We've grown from holding three of nine congressional districts to holding six of nine today. I served two terms as co-chair of the RNC, traveling to 48 of 50 states, focusing on building strong state party organizations and coalitions. While managing the Office of Member Relations, I was and will remain a true advocate for the members of this committee. Most recently, I served as chairman of Roy Blunt's successful campaign for the United States Senate, where I focused on campaign strategy, fundraising, message development, and bringing old and new elements of the grassroots together for an historic victory. Over the years, I have written and directed state party victory plans, raised the money to implement them, managed multi-million dollar budgets, worked effectively with candidates, delivered our conservative message through the media, hired talented professionals to help get the job done, and have always known that party success starts and ends with real people doing real work to make a real difference. Yes, I'm a political operative, but more than that, I am a devoted wife and mother from the middle of America. 
my husband of 23 years, Ray, and our three children are a solid foundation of support for me. Our son Raymond is a senior at West Point, Stephen is a sophomore at Washington University in St. Louis, and Mary Ruth is a high school sophomore. Like you, I am deeply concerned about the direction our left-wing adversaries are taking this country. Our freedoms and values are under assault. I'm concerned about soaring spending, massive debt, punitive tax increases, and an expansive government that seeks to control our businesses, communities, and families. I'm asking for your confidence and your vote to be the next chairman of the Republican National Committee. The cause is great. The time is now. Our mission is not yet complete. Let's do this together. Ann Wagner and her message to the RNC about the upcoming RNC chair election. Here to discuss that and some other things is our Crossfire folk, uh, Danny Law, Republican strategist, and J.P. Johnson. He is a former correspondent for Money's Midtown and Democratic Strategist. Hello, JPJ. How you doing? Doing well. What do you guys think about Ann Wagner uh, trying to run for RNC chair? You think she uh, has what it takes? I think she does. I think it's an awful exciting time for Missouri. I think it's an exciting time for St. Louis. I think it's an exciting time for Ann. I think she's got the know-how, the fundraising, um, and the national stature to do it. It's about time we have an operative and not a politician at the helm. Uh, we've had We've had Steele, who was a, a politician, it's time we have an operative. And I think that that's when the RNC is most successful, is years when an operative leads it, and she knows what it takes and has what it takes. So I think she can. JPJ, she knows how to win. I don't know if she necessarily knows how to win, but I think she'll be a good choice. Number one, she's a woman, and I think having the first woman RNC chair will be will pay huge dividends uh, uh, to the RNC. Number two, I think she will solidify a fundraising where Michael Steele, uh, Michael Steele fell off a little bit. You had the uh, RGA picking up a lot of the slack. You had some uh, 501c4 uh, groups picking up a lot of the slack. So I think she'll definitely solidify the RNC. I think a lot of the leaks that you saw in the RNC will definitely dissipate. And you know, being a homer, I think it'd be awesome if we had one of our own uh, running one of the major uh, political uh, packs in the other country. It's going to be interesting. We'll keep our eye on it here on Mondays in Midtown. But you know, let's talk about 2012. I know it's two years away. Let's talk about it. Uh, here in Missouri, Claire McCaskill, uh, U.S. Senator, a pretty uh, high-profile Democrat on the national spectrum of things. She's going to have a tough battle, isn't she, Danny? I think she looks vulnerable. Um, as of right in the election tomorrow, I'd say she's really vulnerable. I mean, she's going to have to campaign her butt off and see what, see what happens. I think it's going to look like Jim Talent may indeed challenge her, and it's going to be a tough race. Um, I mean, Jim Talent has a lot to prove here, and so does Claire. And if the, the tide turns away, it is in the country right now and keeps getting turning more and more right, I think that she's had an uphill battle to face. JPJ, you think uh, Claire McCaskill can win her re-election bid? Oh, definitely. I think she'll probably get 57, 58 percent. Number one, um, when, when you're in the legislature or in the White House, you only really get two years to govern. The next four years, you're going to spend raising uh, raising a lot of funds. You're going to spend uh, trying to get your message out. And you spend the last couple years back at home. I think one thing Claire McCaskill proved that she can do last time is win in the rural areas because uh, the election two years prior to that, she won in the counties uh, and in the cities. And I think if Jim Talent really wants to challenge her, he needs to be wary about what he's going to do uh, going forward after he loses because after she beat him so handily last time, I think she'll uh, be able to do it again. Okay, I'm being told we're going to have to hurry up real quickly. Uh, 2012 for the presidential uh, campaign. Who do you got for the Republicans, Danny? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have a horse in this race, but I'm, I'm thinking that... If you had to pick a horse. If though, I had to pick a horse, I think... Because we're all at the, we're all at the, the Greyhound track. Well, I guess we're all at the horse track together. I think... I think great. Romney's looking the best. I think Romney's got the best chance um, right now, but it's a long way away. Who knows? If you said this time, do you think President Obama's going to have a chance? No one would have said anything. So I think we have a lot to develop still. JPJ, you're a Ron Paul fan, right? <laughs> <laughs> More of a Rand Paul fan. But uh, I, honestly, I think uh, a lot of people say when you ask about uh, Barack Obama, uh, given this time when he ran for president, nobody thought you know he could take it. And that's not necessarily true. He actually uh, did have a good chance after he gave that speech once he won the Senate race. I personally think Huckabee would beat uh, Obama. I also think John Thune and Mitch Daniels could probably do some damage. But I, I think Romney, with his health care issue and with being a faux pas conservative uh, in the last time he ran, I, I don't think he has a shot. Well, very interesting indeed, gentlemen. I really appreciate both of you coming on for the cross sire segment. We'll have you on soon. And now, here's a little special preview. I'm sorry, it's not a preview. It already took place. So it's a special look at this past CERT final exercise here on Sluice Campus. Can't, can't <laughs> she doesn't want to die. 
That's why nearly 30 faculty, staff, and students took part in a disaster exercise this past weekend to mark the end of their campus emergency response team training here at SLU. Members took part in a real live exercise where they evacuated victims and treated them for a variety of medical conditions. Other exercises the CERT team took part in include cribbing and shoring and debriefing following a disaster. The uh, benefits that the CERT team would give is uh, especially organized additional manpower uh, in the event there's any disaster, um, that they actually would be a group of people that could help and uh, be a very good resource for the community. So why did you guys take the CERT program? Why do you think it's beneficial? Uh, I'm an employee and a student, and I think it's beneficial. I can use it in both aspects, on med campus and this side. Uh, I think it's always good to be prepared and learn a lot of things I didn't know previously. Uh, it was a good experience. If you want to be a part of this good experience known as the CERT team, just send them an email, cert at slu.edu. Good work, team. Joining us now to talk about sports is our own senior sports analyst, Willie McKenna. Hi, Willie. How's it going, Mark? Going well. Great win for the Rams this Sunday. Yeah, that was, that was a big one over the Denver Broncos. Uh, the Rams at one point went on a 33-3 run against the Broncos. They had a huge lead in this game at one point, and somehow that lead ended up uh, vanishing, and they only won the game by three points, but for the Rams, a victory is a victory, and that propels them to a half game in first place in the uh, NFC Western Division. So a couple more big games against Seattle, San Francisco, and Arizona, but the Rams are very much still in this playoff hunt. Is it too early to say the Rams are going to win the Super Bowl? I think it's a bit too early. I think even when it comes to Super Bowl time, that would be a bit too early. Uh, I, yeah, no, I don't think they're good. They're, they're not in for a deep playoff run. But uh, uh, Let's agree to disagree there. What's going on with the Blues? Any new updates there? We've been winning again now. That's good. Uh, they actually just lost two in a row to Dallas. Uh, so, yeah, not... Not too well right now for the Blues. They've dropped down to 17th in the power rankings in the NHL. Uh, they're in fourth place in the uh, Central Division and seventh overall in the Western Conference. So a bit of a tough run here for the Blues, but uh, hopefully they'll get back on track Tuesday night against the Blackhawks. Any basketball news as we head into... Uh, we, we we are coming closely to the winter season. Well, the uh, the Billikens are going to have their ro first uh, road appearance coming up here. Uh, they they're right now three and two on the season. Easily could be uh, you know have only one loss on this season thus far. A couple tough games that have been lost in the final moments: the Austin PA game and also the Georgia game. Two really tough losses for the Billikens. But uh, they're, they're above 500, and that's what you want to see. And hopefully they'll just keep these winning ways going, and hopefully these freshmen are getting on the same page with each other. Well, I'm on the page, too. Thanks a lot, Willie. I appreciate it. And it's now time for Lyle's Corner. Whoa, it's Lyle's Corner, boys and girls. Come on down. You'll learn about cool things around the town. It's Lyle's Corner! So you can pull out <laughs> for the lower string or uh, higher string, or you can push it in <laughs> for the lower string. Um, this is the uh, membrane which vibrates and the resonator uh, which produces a noise. So here's a little sampling. So um, that is the Chinese air hoop. my violin. <laughs> 
built in, um, let's see, a little dust in there, 1895, so it's over 100 years old. Um, trying to think, I don't, anything else interesting about it? It's got these fancy little pegs with the little dots, and this is, this is called a purfling right here, the, the two little um, lines around it, it's kind of fancy. Um, has E, A, D, and G strings. Bow here, um, made by uh, Guy of Giradelli, kind of like the chocolate, except it's spelled with a J. Um, it is wooden and horsehair. And um, similar to the air hoop, this whole violin here acts as a resonator, and it is a chordophone as well. So here's a little bit more for you. A little slower song. Corner. And remember, the views on Lyle's Corner don't necessarily reflect those of Mondays at Midtown, the University, or Father Biondi. Joining us now, Colin Shevlin, Chairman of the Great Issues Committee. He's going to preview this Wednesday's speech of Jim Keaty. Hi, Colin. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm fine. Well. Preview away. <laughs> this Wednesday, we'll be having Jim Keaty, um, who is a social justice leader um, in the field of sweatshops. Uh, his story is pretty fascinating. He was getting his master's degree at St. John's University in coaching soccer. And at the time, they were the number one uh, Division I men's soccer team in the nation. Um, he was researching labor laws with, uh, in, in regards to Catholic social thought. Um, and he came across uh, some pretty egregious things that Nike was doing. Um, and Nike just so happened to be the company that was sponsoring the team. Uh, he brought it up to his superiors, and they said, well, you can either wear Nike or you can go. So he left. And he's been speaking about um, sweatshops and Catholic social teaching ever since. Give us some details on the speech. What time does it start? Where is it at? Well, it starts at 7 p.m., and it's going to be Wednesday in the Wool Ballrooms, 170 and 171. Do the doors open at 6.15? The doors do open at 6.15. All right, we, and we'll uh, be interviewing him for Monday's Midtown for next week. Absolutely. Okay, great. Now, let's check in with our own Brett Kostreski. He has some commentary regarding the, the recent release of documents via WikiLeaks. Thanks, Mark. The storm continues to grow surrounding the dump of a quarter million sensitive classified documents by the private watchdog group WikiLeaks. Their exposure has thrust the global diplomatic scene into chaos as governments attempt to explain to their populations why these leaks appear to contradict public perceptions. I am all for transparency, but not when it endangers the lives of innocent civilians both in the United States and around the world. WikiLeaks didn't release these documents to make a statement on a particular policy. Rather, these documents were dumped with the conscious goal of weakening and eventually toppling our system of global governance. Oftentimes, diplomacy is a delicate balance between lip service and authenticity. If that balance is significantly upended by events like these, the consequences can be disastrous. Better technology will only get us so far, as criminals will always be one step ahead. It is up to our government to use its political, economic, and military might to shut down groups like this, both here in the U.S. and abroad. As data sharing technologies continue to get better, situations like this can only get worse. The Obama administration's initial verbal reaction has been promising. We can only hope that their actions will live up to their words. Victory on this front is just as crucial to our safety as victory against terrorism, maybe more, as the tenuous global relationships that are preventing war are at stake. Mark. Thanks, Brett. The views expressed in 60 seconds with Brett don't necessarily reflect those of Monday's Midtown either. Well, Neil Diamond is an all-star. We know this. But he wrote so many songs, so many of them covered by other artists. UB40, The Monkees, Johnny Cash. This is a clip from a concert in 2008 somewhere in Europe. 
fans really like him because he wrote this song and sold it to the money. That's cool. Neil's awesome. Look for my piece on Neil Diamond in this week's University News. Catch it in the newsstands on Thursday. That's our show for this week. You can always write to us at mondaysinmidtown at gmail.com. That's mondaysinmidtown at gmail.com. If you have an idea, suggestion, thought, or comment, we'll take it. And if you're the first person to email us after this show, you will receive a behind the scenes look. I'll even sign an autograph. Good night, everyone. You want to use, have him use this? Or I can interview him with the handheld mic. I can interview Colin with the handheld mic over here at their, our new uh, studio. Pulsating storms. Pulsating up. I don't remember. It's a nutcracker at the box. We do have the nutcracker at the box. But I don't know. I don't know. Hey, yeah. Maybe. Can I just, can I just do this panel like from here? <laughs> As we scan the digital Doppler, these storms are pulsating off to the north and to the east. I don't think we're going to see much more rain tonight. Probably just clouds, a few sprinkles out there, and maybe some flurries to start the morning off. Uh, if you look at our current temperatures right now, 49 degrees here at St. Louis University. Feels like 48, though. And the dew point's at 48. Winds out of the southeast at 17, gusting at 30. And that pressure is rise, falling at 29 point something. To the southern edge as a taste of winter is on our doorstep. Look at ahead. Oh, no, weather almanac, look at ahead. Really cold to get those jackets out, 29 degrees, mostly cloudy with the winds out of the west. Look at ahead of the weekend, look at ahead. So that's what uh, running screen is like. <laughs> Humphreys County, Mississippi, again, these storms are moving out to the north and east at approximately 50 miles per hour. How fast are these storms moving, David? 50 miles per hour. Racing off to the north and to the east. Deadly no storms. That is. I. Oh, it's Isaquea. Right. Yeah, okay. Isaquea Kwani. And an area called Isaquea. 
Whoa, 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 earthquake, all right. <laughs> Tornado warnings and earthquake. I wanted to get ornaments though. We had, I, had, I had to choose between good hair, uh, shampoo and conditioner or ornaments for our Christmas tree. And I went with the ornaments. It takes behind the same pack. I'm going to do a uh, commentary on Neil Diamond mm -hmm. for this week. I hope so. No edgy. No edge. No edge. Not during this segment. Love the edge cam. I do like the edge cam. Bye, Kristen. Bye. Have a good night. Look forward to the uh, Thursday issue. Great. Um, it's like you. It's closed circuit television. We know this. <laughs> 74. We'll do it. For the high. Sorry.